If you looked at the uh, sample questions I posted on eClass, uh, these three questions are directly coming from there. All right. So the first question is actually uh, uh, one of your uh, sort of uh, last week's uh, uh, assignment question. So there is a preference relation, I'm sorry, binary relation defined on R square plus. So zero, uh, sort of zero, zero is allowed. All right. Uh, however, a negative numbers are not allowed. So it says a bundle XY is at least as good as bundle UV if and only if, or just if, doesn't matter because all definitions are if and only if statements. X times Y minus U times V is greater than or equal to 1. So the first question was last week. Uh, it wasn't your question, but uh, is this a reflexive uh, binary relation? So you know the definition of uh, reflexivity, right? Every, uh, every bundle should be at least as good as itself. What does that mean? That means when I subtract xy from xy, it should be greater than 1. But we know that it is not because it's 0. So therefore, uh, it is not uh, uh, complete. Well, do I have to make a proof for this? Well, yes, you can make a proof or do a proof, but or alternatively, you can just give a counter example. Uh, you can say, hey, look, it is not reflexive because uh, think of 1, 1, all right? It's in the set X, all right? And 1, 1 is not at least as 1, 1 because uh, 1 times 1 minus 1 times 1 is equal to 0, which is not greater than or equal to 1. So that's it. Uh, again, this is a counterexample in a way, uh, which proves that reflexivity does not hold in this case. Second case, is it complete? Well, proving something requires first uh, a hunch, all right? Intuition. Do you have the intuition or hunch? Uh, if you have, well, then the rest is just formally writing it up. That's it, by using the logical deduction. Uh, if you don't have a hunch or, or intuition, well, things are going to be definitely harder. So try to get an intuition first. How do you do that? Well, pick up examples and try to understand if this relation is complete or not. All right. Uh, obviously, I'm not going to pick five or ten examples because I know that this binary relation is not complete. But sometimes you may pick, I don't know, five, ten examples to figure out whether it is complete or not. Um, and these uh, examples are for you to form an intuition, all right? Um, it's not a part of uh, proof. Obviously, if it is not complete uh, and you are looking for a, 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 a counterexample, you may come up with an example uh, with this practice. But normally, otherwise, if you're trying to prove something, it's not a method of proof. So I said it's not complete, so it's not complete. Well, my intuition is the following. Look, it has to be xy at least as good as uv, right? Uh, and this implies, I mean, equivalent to saying xy minus uv is greater than 1 or equal to, I'm sorry. Well, obviously, for completeness, it means xy at least as good as uv or uv at least, at least as good as xy. So that means the difference between these, uh, the multiplication of these two vectors should be greater than 1. But what if it is not greater than 1, but, but less than 1, all right? The so absolute value, this is what it matters. So for example, let's suppose x, y is equal to 1 and 1, all right? And then um, uv is equal to, I don't know, 1 half 1, all right? So in that case, I know that xy, which is 1 times 1, minus uv, 1 half times 1, which is equal to 1 half. This is uh, not less, I'm sorry, now let's put it this way. This is not greater than or equal to 1. And also, so this is not true. And also, 1 half 1 is not at least as good as 1, 1. Why is that? Because... Uh, 1 half times 1 minus 1 times 1, which is equal to uh, minus 1 half. This is clearly not greater than or equal to 1. So both conditions fail to hold. And therefore, it's neither the case that 1, 1 at least is as good as 1 half 1, 
nor the case one half one is at least as good as one one. So therefore, I found one example where this binary relation is not uh, able to compare, and hence the, that binary relation is not complete. Completeness, remember, means you should be able to compare any two, uh, any two uh, different. Uh, yeah, that's maybe important. Any two different binary relation. And then the third one is transitivity. I'm not going to go there, but yes, it is transitive, and so you can prove it. So the question that I want to do now, uh, maybe the fourth case, uh, I'm not doing the third one because the solution is already there, and, and transitivity, uh, I think it's a bit more uh, straightforward, given these two. Um, so what about the uh, indifference curve? Indifference curve, uh, when for, I'm sorry, not when, for uh, uh, bar bundle 1, 1. All right, so what is it? So always, I mean, to me, it works, but always I write the definition and I see a lot of students do it that way, which is a good thing, but uh, don't forget, I mean, you're not going to get any point uh, because you wrote the definition. Uh, it's just, you know, seeing the definition there to me is, is helping. So I put the definition, the indifference curve of the point one, one. So it's vectors like x, y in R uh, square plus, such that, um, right, indifference. So that means x, y times, uh, well, I don't know how to write it, uh, long way, short way. Let's write it long way first. So x, y is indifferent to 1, 1. Okay, so that's, that's the definition. But what does that mean really? x, y is indifferent to 1, 1. It says, in fact, x, y, right? So now I started my logical deductions. What does this definition mean? x, y is at least as good as uh, 1, 1. And 1, 1 is uh, oops, at least as good as uh, x, y. Very good. Now I continue with my logical deduction. What does this uh, 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 statement mean? X, Y, at least as good as 1, 1. Well, according to the definition, remember, it means X times Y minus 1 times 1 is greater than or equal to 1. What does this equation, uh, I'm sorry, this uh, statement tells? Uh, 1, 1, I mean 1, uh, this is not 1.1, it's 1 times 1, all right? Don't, don't be confused. Uh, so maybe I should just write 1 here and 1 here. So it's 1 minus xy is greater than or equal to 1. Okay? All right, so what can I say next? Look, I mean, this is xy minus 1. I can just send, you know, 1 to the other side. Obviously, this is not going to change the inequality. So that means x times y is greater than or equal to 2. Okay, so that means I need to find x's and y's where when I multiply them, the value, the multiplication should be greater than or equal to 2, like 2, 1, 1, 2, etc. Very good. So I have some candidates in my mind in a, sort of to form this set. What does this say? Uh, this says, well, this time send x, y to the other side and 1 to the, uh, the, the left hand side. So it means 0. Uh, less than or equal to x times y. Huh. Well, look. Remember, this is and, right? This statement must hold and this statement must hold. Meaning, I must have, so let me write it here, x times y greater than or equal to 2, but it should also be less than or equal to 0. Question is, is there any two numbers when I multiply two non-negative numbers, by the way, right? I'm picking them from here. Is there any two non-negative uh, numbers, two numbers, where when I multiply them, the multiplication is greater than two or equal, but also less than zero, also at the same time? No, this is impossible, right? Uh, I mean, you don't need to prove this. We already know it from, I don't know, uh, the high school, secondary school, primary school. So, 
I mean, yeah, the, the very basic things you don't need to prove. So uh, at least, you know, uh, you know, the, the best kind of information. So there are, there is no uh, such x, y, all right? Um, so what does that mean? Well, that means I go all the way back to my definition of indifference curve. Indifference curve uh, of point one one is x and y's from my uh, mother set such that x and y is indifferent to one one. And I say there's no such x, y. Well, then therefore there's just one conclusion. My indifference curve set is empty. All right. They may. I mean, that may sound weird because you always get used to the idea of drawing some nice indifference curve, but apparently some preference relations do not have indifference. By the way, the, even the weirdest, uh, uh, even more weird uh, thing is that the one one, uh, the point itself, even that one is is not in the indifference curve. Well, and, and you probably understand why, because this preference relation is not reflexive. I mean, you cannot even compare one one with itself. You're not even, I mean, philosophically, what does that mean? Uh, you're not indifferent to one one, but your starting point is one one. Like, uh, what the heck does that mean? Well, I mean, so here it's very important that you understand the definition of indifference curve. All right. So. Sometimes, apparently, if the preference relation is, uh, if the binary relation, I'm sorry, is not reflexive, uh, even the point itself may not be on the indifference curve, all right? I'm asking you, uh, what is the point that you're indifferent to 1, 1? You can't even say it is 1, 1, all right? So it's empty. There's no such point uh, in R square plus. So that's basically how we prove, or sh not prove, but find the indifference curve uh, of 1, 1, for this binary relation. And obviously, you can now probably extend this logic to any point, right? I mean, what is special about 1, 1? Trust me, nothing. So you can actually extend this idea to any point, x, y. And so you can find the indifference. In fact, one question, which is a, a one step uh, more challenging than this, is like, prove that for any x, y, in R plus square, the indifference curve of x, y is an empty set. All right, so this is a valid statement, and I, I didn't prove it, but I believe it is true. So how do you prove it? Well, you probably need a few more steps than this because you can't take one one, all right? Uh, so you can't really use uh, one here. You're not gonna be able to multiply one and one. So, but nevertheless, you just generalize this approach, this proof, to prove uh, sort of uh, the, the, the second argument that I made. Uh, but the approach is going to be very, very similar. Any question?